Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, August 27th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a little tutorial by Xavier about yet another obfuscated malware sample and how to make quick work of it with command line tools. In this example, it all starts out with a byte order mark that confuses tools to assume that this file is UTF-16 encoded, which it's not. Then it continues with empty variables that are just ignored. Well, all it takes for uh, these deobfuscation steps is a little bit file editing and some regular expressions. In the end, you get again a complete Python environment and then a script that will implement persistent via scheduled tasks and use process hollowing in order to launch additional uh, malware. Now, why do attackers go through all the trouble uh, to uh, obfuscate their code like this if it's relatively straightforward to actually deobfuscate it. Well, in this example, VirusTotal has no hits for the original downloader, at least at the time when Xavier analyzed it. And yes, we now have a proof of concept exploit for the Windows IPv6 vulnerability that was patched earlier in August. As always, be careful with these kind of exploits. I looked at it, reviewed the code, and it looks reasonable and plausible to me that this is working exploit code. It does not actually trigger the remote code execution, but just crashes the target system. There's also a pretty good explanation of the vulnerability and the actual mechanism that triggers the exploit here. I'll try to summarize it, uh, but again, in the show notes, you'll find a link uh, to the actual uh, GitHub repo where you'll find all the details. The problem here is that if Windows receives multiple IPv6 packets, it will process them in uh, bunches. And uh, that's not unusual. That's very common sort of for optimization. The problem is if these packets now have extension headers, well, uh, that's where the problem happens. In particular, if an error is triggered and an ICMP error is being sent back to the source. So in order to trigger this in the proof of concept, the attacker is sending a number of packets with the destination header and then later with the fragment header set. That causes, as these packets are so bunched together and processed, confusion as to length fields in the destination options and the fragment headers, which then triggers the exploit as the error message is being sent back. There is a delay of a minute after the expert packets have been sent because that's how long it takes for the IPv6 reassembly timeout error to be triggered, which then triggers the error message that then triggers the vulnerability. So again, this proof concept exploit just crashed the system in order to actually execute arbitrary code. A lot more work is required. In order to detect exploitation attempts for this vulnerability, I would probably look for the destination option header. It's relatively straightforward to detect. You just look at the next header field in the IPv6 header. The fragment header can be seen in the wild in real packets. I don't see a lot of them for IPv6. IPv6 does a lot to avoid fragmentation, but uh, you may get some false positives here from uh, the uh, fragment header. Destination option headers, theoretically, yes, you could see them. I personally haven't really seen them in my networks yet, so that should make a reasonable, a good detection strategy. Just as a little warning that not Everything that calls itself a vulnerability is actually a vulnerability. There has been a GitHub post that gained some traction about a possible vulnerability in Pandas. That's actually a library we talked about yesterday, a Python file parsing library. Well, uh, the problem here is the vulnerability just says, hey, you can open the Etsy password file. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this as far as Pandas is concerned. Pandas can open files. 
It's restricted by the operating system's permissions. It's not really up to pandas to figure out which files you're supposed to open or not supposed to open. So just uh, I put a link in the show notes. I don't put it in the headline here for this episode because this is, in my opinion, definitely not a vulnerability. And well, that's it for today. And thanks again for listening. Thanks for liking, recommending, subscribing this uh, podcast and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.